motion to go back into public session? So moved. Can I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for June 19th, 2017. Can I have a motion to go into executive session for the matters pertaining to the particular employment history of particular individuals and contractual negotiations? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Dennis? All right, can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for June 19th, 2017. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for our armed forces and those in our community who have lost loved ones, especially remembering the father-in-law of Barbara Franciscini and the brother of Dennis Oblig Obligado. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. So uh, this is like our favorite night of the year, it really is. Um, but before we do that, I just want to make one um, mention, as you notice, there's only six of us up here tonight. Mrs. Montero resigned from the Board of Education last week. It was effective immediately, immediately and so, so until we make a decision, we're a board of six. But we want to thank her for her years of service, and because of that, we did invite her at graduation to sit as an honored guest with us and give her daughter her diploma on stage. So we just wanted to thank Mrs. Montero, and now we can continue. Go ahead, Ralph. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our last Board of Education meeting for the 2017 school year. On behalf of Mrs. Carbone, Mr. Magnani, and our board trustees, I thank you for being here with us this evening. Throughout the course of the school year, our board meets minimally on 22 occasions, and sometimes more often. Our board works hard all year long to ensure that the district's policies are updated, implemented, and evaluated. Additionally, they give careful thought and consideration to the district budget to ensure that the programs and activities that foster the education of the whole child are thoroughly followed. It is my honor tonight to recognize our school board members who have served and will continue to serve the district next school year. Mrs. Jackie Carbone, Mr. Mike Magnani, Mr. Anthony D'Alessandro, Mr. Thomas Donatelli, Mrs. Sh uh, Mrs. Cheryl Reynolds, and Mrs. Reshmi Bose. Would you please acknowledge our board? And even though Mrs. Carbone uh, recognized Mrs. Montero, I have decided for tonight I'm not going off script. I have that written down. Every time I go off script, I weep. So that's not going to happen. So I'm just going to stick with the script. At this time, I would also like to recognize Mrs. Christine Montero, who faithfully and fervently served, served on our board for the past seven years. Mrs. Montero has tendered her resignation from the Board of Education, and her board colleagues have accepted that resignation. Please help me to recognize Mrs. Montero. As Mrs. Carbone said, the board has some very favorite nights, which include tenure recognition night, good news night when our children appear and talk about what's going on in their classrooms and in their schools, board recognition night, and of course the opportunity to recognize retiring employees have con who have contributed so greatly to the welfare of our students past and present. They also look forward to honoring those who are celebrating special anniversaries with the district and who will continue on their journeys at Yorktown Central School District. 
To begin our program, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the select Yorktown Chorus. Their conductor, Mr. Tom Arduini, has been ill and continues to recover nicely from his illness. However, he is not able to be with us tonight. Our former AP biology teacher, who's also very talented in other areas, is Miss Cookie Locks, and she has graciously served to uh, continue in Mr. Arduini's place during his absence. Our brilliant choir continues to perform beautifully and thoughtfully under her direction. To honor all of the retirees and to honor all those who are celebrating significant anniversaries, they will perform the beautiful song, You Raise Me Up. Colleagues, hopefully you will recognize some of your former students in the performing group. My wish is that you will remember how much you saw in them when they were in your classes and how much of what you saw in them has come to fruition in how they perform this evening. Please welcome the select chorus.
Oh, before you all sit, maybe one other thing. Um, Mrs. Locks, if you don't mind, there are several students from the class of 2017. I would just like them to come forward so that everybody else can acknowledge them. They'll be graduating this Saturday. I just love these kids. I don't know if you love them as much as I do, but I'm sure you do. If you're their parents, I'm sure you do. <laughs> if you don't know them, you don't, but I love them. So um, thank you, Mrs. Locks, my dear students. Um, now it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our a cappella group, Jake and the Emmets, consisting of Emma Smalls, Gregory Caladana, Amanda Montgomery, and Jake Cariello himself, who is actually uh, the pianist. They are going to surprise us with a song, which I'm certain you're going to enjoy. Thank you, Jake and the Emmets. Wait, is this, is this on? Oh, it is on. <laughs> Should we move it closer? No, okay. Um, hey, so we're Jake and the Emmets. Um, again, you might have seen our famous Facebook video. It's awesome. Um, I'm Gemma. I'm a senior. You want to introduce us? What, he just introduced us. Oh, yeah, that's Jake. Oh, shoot, he introduced us. Oh, okay, never mind. Let's just start. Sorry, point point. No, 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 don't worry about it. Let's see. Yes. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow.
the reason why that was so particularly special to me was because I asked them if they'd be able to do that song together, uh, Lean On Me and Bridge Over Trouble With Water, and I probably asked them a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it was really too complicated, and I said, go with something you know, and they did it. Pretty incredible, right? So I, I think, Mrs. Locks, if you and the students would like to go, we thank you all very much. You're as beautiful as always. And Gemma, maybe we just want to return that mic and... Mrs. Locks, maybe we need that little stand also? Oh, we have one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Gemma. While I, too, have always enjoyed this evening, what makes this one a little unusual for me is that I'm among the group of honored retirees. I thought a long time about what I wanted to say, and I think I'm going to postpone that for a second because maybe the more natural way of doing this tonight, considering that I'm um, among the group of people who are retiring, is we'll start with the anniversary celebrants. So for the people who are celebrating anniversaries, the board, we, we removed chairs from um, here, as you can see. The board, I'm going to ask you to stand there. When your name is called, uh, if you're in the audience, would you please come up? Uh, yes, please, thanks. Uh, would you please come up? Would you greet the board? Um, and I, I'm going to, um, Ask Mrs. Tomini, who's already on the job. Uh, Mrs. Tomini is our PTSA pre president and the parent of four children in the district. Could you give her a hand? So I think I'm going to begin with the 20, 20th year anniversary celebrants. So Angela Caponia. Angela is one of our teaching assistants at the Mohansic School. Ellen Kahn is one of our teacher assistants, Mohansic School. And soon to be a grandmother. Antonella Dable. Antonella is one of our teachers at Mohansic School. Timothy Dwan. I, I can see now that he's not here this evening. Tim is one of our teachers at the Mohansic School, and thank you for recognizing his service. Michael Getz. Michael Getz is our orchestra teacher at Crom Pond and also at the middle school.
our Director of Technology, Patrice Hatchie-George. One of our teacher assistants at Crompon School, um, Sh Sharon Longier. Thank you for acknowledging Sharon. One of our clerical staff, um, Debbie Santavica. One of our teachers from Brookside School, Lisa Santasusa. One of our custodians from Mildred E. Strang Middle School, Pete Scagnelli. One of our teacher assistants from Brookside School, Isabel Scherf. One of our teacher assistants from Crompon School, Susan Serio.
one of our guidance counselors from the Yorktown High School, Michelle Schneider. And our last 20 year celebrant, Catherine Young. <laughs> Kathy is one of our teachers at Mohansic School. totaled, uh, the celebrants of their 20th anniversary have served the district cumulatively 280 years. <laughs> so. I know there's something wrong with that math, but I figured I'd throw it out there. Um, I know that Mrs. Jacobs won't be joining us tonight. She's celebrating her 25th anniversary with the district. And she's a teacher at um, Crampon School. I, I think Fern Michelle may be here. She's a teacher at Mildred E. Strang Middle School. Well, and I, I'm safe on this call because I see her in the audience. Uh, Sharon Wenderoth is a teacher assistant at Brookside. Thirtieth anniversary teacher assistant Pat Hetzer. <laughs> Pat is actually the assistant at the high school uh, for the nurse. Fifth anniversary for head custodian Tommy Morrissey. Thank you for acknowledging Tommy. I know he would be grateful for your applause. Fortieth anniversary. I, I know neither of these people are here because when you've been around for forty years, you don't want to show off. Uh, <laughs> Rain Hunninger is a teacher assistant in our library. And Virginia Milano is one of our teacher assistants at Crompon School. <laughs> uh, 
And, and as I'm noting my words, I'm thinking to myself, I'm saying one of our, one of our, and what I should really be saying is one of our best, one of our best, and I didn't want to be redundant in, in repeating that. But I do want you to know that the people that have just been acknowledged for celebrating significant anniversaries here are one of our best in each of those categories. So although I didn't say it, and forgive me for not saying it, know that I meant it sincerely from my heart. If I left anybody off an anniversary list, please, please, please tell me now. Don't send me an email in the morning and give me a coronary <laughs> because that will cause guilt like it's unbelievable and then I'll have to appear in your building with a box of chocolate and <laughs> uh, just spam me and tell me tonight. I'd rather hear it right now. Everybody, you're my witness. Nobody, nobody, okay. So now, now I guess I'll speak my words and, and then you'll understand where we're going from here. I started out and then I recalled that I was supposed to reverse it, so forgive me for repeating these first two sentences. While I too have always enjoyed this evening, what makes it a little unusual for me is I'm among the group of honored retirees. I thought a long time about what I wanted to say and then decided upon a wonderful reflection written by a gentleman named Bob Perks. I hope that you will like it as much as I do. It is entitled Whose list are you on? I had to say goodbye to someone special. You all know how difficult it is for us to say goodbye. And so I struggled with what I needed to say. But at the same time, I discovered something special about how I feel about people and myself too. It's the thing about caring about people. They get into your life, sometimes briefly, and manage to become a part of who you are. Not all people, but those special people who arrive unexpectedly and linger there. So you ask yourself, how does that happen? They are the ones who the first time you meet them touch you in such a way that they leave an imprint on your heart. They are the people you look for and hope to meet along your journey. They make your journey easier. Some become close friends and share everyday happenings in your life. Others just pass through, leaving behind bits and pieces of who they are. Then there are those who are always there, but often the distance, somewhere within reach whenever you need them. You may only see them once in a while, but when you do, you are made better. You're lifted up. You're energized by the time that you've shared with them. After reading this, like the author, I thought about the many people in my life who fit into this group. I realized how many people I depend on each day, sometimes just to get through the day. And my feelings, like the author's, is I am blessed beyond measure. It also brings up the question, are each of us one of those people? Are we part of the change that we want to see in the world? The author ends by saying, look around at the people that you love and depend on daily. Make a list of their qualities and the things that you admire and value about them. Do you reflect those qualities in the lives of others? I know that the people who are being honored here this evening upon their retirement reflect the values, the qualities, and the characteristics of being on the list. They are also on the list of some of our guest speakers who would like to let them know why they are on their particular list. So I'm going to ask you to welcome our first speaker, who's a kindergartner, but already preparing to go to first grade, thinking about it because it's only a summer away. And her name is Alexandra, and she's going to be speaking about Mrs. Bracco. Tatus. Hello, neighbor. What do you say? It's gonna be a happy day. So greet your neighbor and boogie on down. Give them a bump and turn around. This is one of the fun songs we sing in class. I was lucky to be in Mrs. Bracco's class this year. She teaches, taught me 
so many things I learned to read, do number bonds, Zumba, and being a good friend. Mrs. Brocco gives us marbles when we did something good. So today she is going to earn her marble. <laughs> One marble is for always smiling. Two second marble is for being so nice. Third marble is for always helping us do our work. Fourth marble is for being the best dancer. <laughs> Fifth marble is for loving us. We are going to miss you next year. We love you. We may not remember everything you said, but we will remember how special you made us feel. Thank you. You did a beautiful job, Alexandra. I'm gonna to have to remember to bring you a marble tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Jack Bruner is here to speak for Vita De Rosa. DeRosa, I first met you when I was in kindergarten. You visited our classroom every Wednesday for switching tables. Sometimes you read us stories, while other times we clapped out the syllables in our names. Each activity was 15 minutes and, they, and there were different activities at each table. I like how you used to call me for the difficult words. I always look forward to Wednesdays. In first grade, I went into their room for speech. We listened to tapes of words and sentences and repeated them out loud. I learned how to pronounce them. I liked the longer words you chose for us to work on. They were challenging. My favorite part of speech was getting stickers for doing my homework. This year, speech was on wheels. You rolled their cart next to the door of my classroom, and we worked together in the hallway. 
I learned how to say the S sound in all words, sentences, and even conversational speech. Finally, I am graduating from speech at Brookside. I guess in a way you are too. Thank you for being such an important part of my journey here at Brookside. Mrs. DeRosa, I appreciate that you always helped me when I made mistakes and stayed happy. You never got mad. You always greeted me with a smile and you were always in a good mood. You made me feel calm and safe when I was with you. I will, I will always remember their kindness. I wish you have a happy retirement, Mrs. DeRosa, and hope you enjoy this new journey in your life. Best wishes, Jack Brenner. Would you agree that Jack is on his way to teaching speech? <laughs> Did he not do a brilliant job? Please welcome Tommy Bragg for Carmela Labruto. I always wanted a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> you always know how to make us laugh. You greet us with a smile every morning. Thank you for working with us when we needed help. We will miss you, but she wish you luck with retirement. We will never forget you. We and we thank you for all that you have done. Tommy really didn't need his father's help. We were doing a commercial for parents and teachers as partners, and uh, it was just perfect. It was so perfectly scripted. 
Uh, please welcome Gavin, Gavin Jacobwitz, who's going to speak for Sharon Wenderroth. Mrs. W is fun every day. She knows a lot to teach us. She is kind and funny. She, Mrs. W, always helps us do our best. Miss, Mrs. W sings a lot of songs. She, she loves the Beatles. <laughs> And if we're lucky, she'll do a little dance. <laughs> I will miss Miss W. Love, Gavin. Gavin, does she have a favorite Beatles song? Is there a favorite song that she sings by the Beatles? Do you know? <laughs> Please welcome Gianna, who's going to speak for Patty Miller. Mrs. Miller. When I first found out my second grade teacher was Mrs. Miller, I felt excited. Mrs. Miller is so nice. She is a great teacher. I have learned so much from her. I love learning all about social studies and geography. Mrs. Miller always makes learning fun. She inspires me every day. Mrs. Miller is very special to me. The time has come for Mrs. Miller to retire, and I am here to tell her she will be missed. An awesome teacher like Mrs. Miller is hard to find, difficult to let go of, and impossible to forget. So Mrs. Miller, I'm here to tell you, as Dr. Seuss once said, Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. Happy retirement. I hope you know you have been an amazing teacher. Please come back and visit. Don't you all want to be teachers? Please welcome Naya, who's going to speak for Josephine Bianco. Dear Mrs. Bianco, I'm really going to miss you. I'm going to miss your kindness and happiness. I remember when I get picked up, you would tell me my mom was here and I would and I would not hear you because you're always so calm and quiet. When I finally heard you, I would say I'm sorry. I'm really going to miss how you never get mad when I hand in a letter late. 
No one can be as nice or as kind as you. Whoever replaces you can definitely not do it the same as you. Your specialness can't be replaced, and I'm going to miss walking by you sit and saying hello. I really don't want you to leave. When I'm upset and you say hello to me, it makes my day happy. Mrs. Bianco is never mad. She is always in a good mood. I'm sure no one can make her upset. She has such a kind heart. From Naya Alves. Please welcome Ryan from Mary Hayes. Mrs. Hayes, you are the best computer teacher. You show us how to work the computer. You are very nice to everyone. You make sure we all listen and stay safe. Thank you for teaching us in the computer lab and helping us in the cafeteria. I will miss your smiling face. I hope you get to spend more time with your family and more time at the beach. Thank you for helping to make my first year at Mohantic so special and for always looking out for me. You always take such great care of me. I love when you always walk into the, my, into the classroom. You always smile and wave at me. Thank you for helping to make Mohantic a special place. Everyone is going to miss you very much, especially me, Claire, and Rory. We will miss seeing you drive past our house every day and wave at us. I don't know if you've noticed, the children are giving copies of the speeches to, to the teachers. Please welcome Fariz and Alexandra to speak for Bob Ellis. Mr. Ellis by Faris Kukai. Thank you, Mr. Ellis, for being my teacher. It was nice how you introduced me to read naturally. I was so proud when I got to another level. You really know how to make reading fun. Math was always easier when you taught me. It was so fun when you let us play team building activities like mumba. You are hilarious, Mr. Ellis. You. 
You are funny when you say, if I have to talk to you again, I will have to talk to you again. <sighs> I learned so much from you this year. I was so happy I was able to teach you something. I taught you the dab move. I think you now do it better than me. So thank you for everything you have done. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on your retirement. You deserve it. Mr. Ellis, we will all miss you dearly. It was an honor for our class to have you as our teacher. You helped us understand the true meaning of learning and you've created a group of children that are very thankful to have had you as our teacher. You've meant so much to us. Mr. Ellis, you always wanted to improve our learning, which we always appreciated, but maybe we never showed it. You helped us make our work better. You wanted us to be the best students we could possibly be and accomplish our goals by taking down challenges in our learning. We grew so much because of you. You make learning fun and you make us get a better idea of math, social studies, and poetry. You taught us how to work hard, be kind to one another, and act responsible. You, told us how, you taught us how to eat healthy and try new things. You showed us how to be a role model to other students in this school. You helped us be ourselves no matter how different we may be. This trait of you, Mr. Ellis, reminds me of the quote, be yourself, everyone else is taken. The jokes you tell always brightened our day. Mr. Ellis, we, will all, we were all interested to hear your stories and all you have to say. The memories we've made with you helped us create a better bond with you and our classmates. I wish there was no such thing as retirement. I can't explain how much I will miss you. When I come into this school, it's like entering another family. Miss Burns is like the super fun mom. Mr. Ellis is like our super cool dad, and Mrs. P is like that really nice aunt you always want to be around. They really are a second family to me and our class. There is no one who can replace you. Mr. Ellis, you truly are one great teacher. I wish you could stay. Congratulations on your retirement, Mr. Ellis. Please welcome Sophia for our school nurse at Crown Pond, Elaine Goodwin. Good evening, everyone. Before I begin, I would like to say that I am honored to speak on behalf of Nurse Goodwin. Nurse Goodwin is the best school nurse you could ask for. When you walk into her office, she greets you with a smile that makes you feel good inside. My name is Sophia Rell, and I have diabetes, so I have to test my sugar and take insulin, so I have to go to a nurse just a few times a day. Nurse Goodwin helps me out with counting my carbs and making sure that the math is right and that I get the right amount of insulin so my numbers aren't too high or too low. Sometimes when my numbers are low, Nurse Goodwin gives me juice and pretzels. Sometimes she even lets me color. I really appreciate all that she does for me. Nurse Goodwin is always happy no matter if the office is packed like they're giving away free candy or just another casual day in her office. 
Her beautiful smile always makes me feel good inside. Why? When I'm at school, she is like a second mom to me because she helps me out when I need it. She makes sure that I have a good snack and a healthy lunch. She makes sure that nothing is bothering me and that I'm okay. One time, my paw came out, and she helps me put a new one on. Another time, I fell off the monkey bars, and she made sure that I had no scrapes and I wasn't badly hurt. I, it could just be a simple scrape or a stomach ache, but nurse go and make sure that it's all okay. When I go to the middle school next year, I am going to miss you so, so much because you are like the jelly to my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Thank you, Nurse Gover, for all that you have done for me in the standards at Crampa. Congratulations on your retirement. Crampa will not be the same without you. And thank you for packing my parachute, Nurse Goodwin. Please welcome Adela and Nicholas for Lynn Sarrow. Dr. Napolitano visited Crompon and told us about a book called The Butterfly Effect, How Your Life Matters, written by Andy Andrews. We read this book and another one by the same author called The Boy Who Changed the World. The book tells this story. In 1963, a scientist by the name of Edward Lorenz made a hypothesis to a group of scientists. His theory was called The Butterfly Effect. What this means to us is that a butterfly could flap its wings and set the molecules of air in motion, which can move more molecules of air, which can move even more molecules of air. Eventually, the motion of air could cause a hurricane on the other side of the planet. Dr. Lorenz and his ideas were laughed at by the scientists he was presenting to. However, more than 30 years after being laughed at by those scientists, it was actually proven that he was right and the butterfly effect is true. It was made into a law called the Law of Sensitive Dependence Upon Initial Conditions. What this law means to us is, not just butterfly wings in their motion, but everything you do matters. Every move you, every move you make, every conversation you have, every decision you make, every action you take matters. Not just to you, or your family, or your school, or your town, but everything you do matters of us forever. So why, are we talk so why are we talking about this law? Because we are here to because we are here to tell you about a very special person who matters in our lives and the lives of many other people. Her name is Mrs. Sarah. Mrs. Sarah has made every Mrs. Sarah has made every move Mrs. Sarah has made, every action she has taken, every conversation she has she has she has had with us matters, and she has touched our lives forever. We gave her a butterfly box filled with the ways she has touched our lives. Here is a book. Here is, here is a book we all signed. We will, read a few, we will read a few of the ways she shows us she cares about us. She always greets you by name and says hello, like she's happy to see you. She is like our school mom. She rarely says no unless she has to. <laughs> she even does nice things to show kindness to strangers. She lends us money if we need it for lunch, a drink, or snack. Uh, 
She always uses a kind and patient tone when talking to us. She helps us talk out our problems we are having with our classmates. And she calls us sweetie. <laughs> we can go on forever talking about how everything Mrs. Sarah does for us matters. She makes us feel important and special in her life. She is a role model for who we can become in the future and how we should treat others. She has had a butterfly effect on us all. We, we wish, wish her a happy retirement and we'll miss her very much. I asked Nicholas if they uh, pay Mrs. Sarrow back when she lends the money. And he said, I don't know, so I guess they don't pay her back. Most often I never comment about a retiree because again, going off of um, the script can get you into trouble and certainly you don't want to speak about one and yet an, and not another. But I do take this minute to speak about uh, Donna Barada and I'll invite the two students up to speak about her. Uh, Donna is our library media specialist at the middle school and unlike the rest of us who were all ready for our retirements, Donna was not prepared for hers. Hers came suddenly due to illness uh, in her family, the illness of her parents, the illness of her husband, so many things that became overwhelming. Uh, so I, I comment about that, uh, not to share Donna's personal life, but simply to say for some, we were ready to go. For Donna, that was not the case. Um, as all of the people that you've met so far, and there are a few left to meet, uh, every one of these individuals is simply spectacular. Um, and we had hoped that Donna would be with us a little bit longer and just we would be selling a br celebrating an anniversary with her rather than a retirement. So having said that, I invite Gianna and Dominic to speak on behalf of Donna. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Dominic and I'm gonna speak about Dr. Barada. Dr. Barada is a very special person. She runs our school library, and most importantly, the Fab Lab. Dr. Barada has a lot of very special qualities. The best thing about Dr. Barada is she makes us feel important. She gives us a lot of responsibilities and respect because she believes we can do it. She always makes us feel welcome and gives us a safe place where we can go at lunch to do to work on our creations. She is always positive and encourages us to create awesome projects and doesn't lose her sense of humor when she sees the results. <laughs> <laughs> she helps us to laugh at ourselves she is always there to help us with our projects and when we have questions about 3D printing. She even helped me make earrings for my mom. Hi, I'm Gianna. Dr. Rod is super creative. She makes beautiful polymer clay sculptures and nicer jewelry than you could buy in a jewelry store. She pushes us to be creative, too. Dr. Barada never gets mad or loses her patience with our endless questions. She's always checking in on us to make, sure, to make sure we know what we are doing. You can always count on her smile to make your day. 
One thing is for sure, Dr. Barada cares about the students she works with, and that is why we love her and will miss her. What we would really like is if she could stay with us till the eighth grade. I'm going to introduce you to a wonderful group of students who are here to talk about their um, aid. And her name is Carol Fabrizio. So I'm going to ask Brian, Alicia, Jake, and Christopher to come forward. And here they come. I see Michael too. Michael was uh, Michael's here. Yes? No? No Michael? Who's here? Yes, no? Hey there. How are you? Good. Good evening, everyone, and, and Ms. Fabrizio, or as we like to call her, Ms. Fizzy, you have been such a wonderful teacher to us. We cannot thank you enough for your kind words, encouragement, generosity, and patience. You have been such an important part of our day, and it will be very different without you next year. We know who you want want to spend time with Gabriella, and I guess it's okay to share you. Please don't forget that about us, and we, we look forward to Fun Fridays with Fizzy next year. Good e evening, everyone. The best is yet to come in your life, so worry not our wishes are with, with you, because we love you a lot. The most awesome time in your life is yet to be, for you have been the best teacher in the whole galaxy. Happy, Happy retirement! retirement. This is Mrs. Purdy, their teacher. Would you wave to everybody?
and we're off to the high school and then just two more. So uh, from the high school, please welcome Nadia, who's going to speak on behalf of our nurse, Vicki Sullivan. there are certain people whose influence creeps up on us without much noise or fuss. Their presence may be subtle, but the mark they leave is strong. Mrs. Sullivan is one of those people. I don't think even she knows just how much of an impact she has had on my high school experience. I've experienced a lot with Mrs. Sullivan, from three separate knee injuries to traveling literally around the world for orchestra competitions to winter breaks in Europe. And she has always been there on the edges of many of the major experiences I have had in high school. She always has a kind word to say, and though we don't often speak, the conversations we have always make me laugh and leave me with a smile on my face. Mrs. Sullivan is not only an empathetic and attentive, is not only empathetic and attentive, two qualities that make her an amazing caregiver, but she is also humorous and sincere, which make her an amazing person. More than once, I've seen her talk to parents and ask after students who graduated years ago, always remembering some little detail about them. I remember distinctly on this non-school sanctioned trip to Italy this past February, my friends and I were chaperoned by Mrs. Sullivan and her husband on our quest to find a restaurant for dinner. Now imagine, if you will, three technology-driven teenagers trying to navigate their way through the streets of Florence at night using only a paper map. <laughs> Needless to say, we weren't the best guides. But Mrs. Sullivan, despite the long day of walking we had just had, was more than happy to be along for the ride, or at least she never let us know otherwise. When we eventually found that restaurant, Mrs. Sullivan didn't just ignore us for the probably much more engaging conversation of her husband, she made a conscious effort to talk to us, to ask us about our day and our future plans. And this happened on more than one occasion during the trip. I'm sure Mrs. Sullivan probably doesn't remember that night, but to me it is just another example of her amiable and considerate nature. Like I said at the beginning of this speech, Mrs. Sullivan may not be someone with, to whom I talk every day, or someone who entered my life with great pomp and circumstance, but I know for a fact that when I come back to visit YHS next year, her presence will be sorely missed. Congratulations on your retirement, Mrs. Sullivan. I hope you enjoy it to the fullest because you definitely deserve it. Just one more time off script, probably one of the most difficult jobs in the district uh, is the position of athletic director. You might only imagine how complex that position is because of all the sports, 67 plus teams, all the student athletes, all the parents, God help us, and, uh, and everyone who thinks they know a lot about sports from hither, thither, and yon. You have to have a special disposition you have to have uh, good knowledge and excellent values, and you get to perform the job as well as this gentleman, and I don't think there's too many who do. So I'm going to ask Alyssa Franchese to come up. Francese, Francese, I do the Francese, forgive me. Alyssa Francese is gonna speak on behalf of Fio Nardone, the athletic director. And thank you, the board, for having me here to speak on behalf of our athletic director, Mr. Arnone, as we honor him for all he has done for Yorktown. Having played sports in our high school the past four years, I have been able to firsthandly see the impact that Mr. Arnone has made on not only the school athletics and just the overall school community. Mr. Arnone has sh helped shape Yorktown High School athletics into one of the best programs in not only Section 1, but in New York State. 
Athletics have played such a large role in my high school experience, and I can personally thank Mr. Ardon for contributing to that. In his 16 years at Yorktown, he has put in so much time and effort all year long to ensure that all teams in each season have had the equipment, uniforms, facilities, and coaches needed to be successful. He has played an active role in the development and construction of our new turf fields and has maintained and upgraded all other athletic facilities. He has also taken part in the addition of our new scoreboards for all of the fields used by our different sports teams. Mr. Nardone has given a tremendous amount of support to all athletics in Yorktown. He has been able to attend every home or away game that he possibly could in order to cheer on his athletes as they compete. He has spent a tremendous amount of time scheduling games, referees, buses for traveling, and facility, facility usage. The hours and days that he has countlessly put into being an athletic director is immeasurable. He has taken his job as an athletic director to a new level by also establishing relationships with all of his athletes during his time here. While many students in other programs do not know their athletic di director, all of the Yorktown athletes do, and they also know he knows all of them. This just exemplifies how involved he has been in supporting his athletes while competing, as well as knowing them on a personal level. In his 16 years as our athletic director, Mr. Nardone has done so much that will never be forgotten. I'd like to personally thank you, Mr. Nardone, for all of you have done for girls' sports and for me personally. You will be greatly missed by everyone, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And, and now, believe it or not, I brought a former student who's a resident of Yorktown, because I have many students in Yorktown, uh, but the reason for choosing this particular student of mine was that she ended up becoming a teacher. And I always take great pride when former students become teachers, because somehow you want to think you were part of that decision. Uh, she's a parent in our school district and has three children who attend our schools. And she's one that always keeps in touch. So I think when I first landed here, she was the first one to acknowledge that she was so excited that I was here because I had been her principal. So I am going to introduce Dana Morello, who is a teacher at Harrison School District in middle school. Hi, Dana. Good evening, Dr. Napolitano, Mrs. O'Shea, Dr. McGinnis, Mr. Cole, Mr. Nardone, Mr. Verboy, Mr. Lease, Ms. Hattie George, Mr. Rosen, building administrators, board members, families, and members of our community. It is my honor and privilege to stand before you to speak on behalf of Dr. Ralph Napolitano in this newly named auditorium. A speech for Dr. Ralph, in my opinion, would not be quite as poignant without a brief story. Finding an incredible suitable story to read in front of this particular community proved to be quite a challenging task. And I am grateful for the superintendent's letters archives on the website. <laughs> I was able to cross-reference my ideas with stories and quotes already used by Dr. Ralph. 11 years times 10 months of newsletters do not leave much new material out there. And I already knew I couldn't use Ann Wells, Lee Iacocca, Bob Moore, Irma Bombach, or anything Dr. Ralph's nunna used to say. Instead, I chose to read from a book originally written by Tolstoy, published in 1885, and rewritten by John J. Muth in 2002. It is entitled, The Three Questions. There once was a boy named Nikolai, who sometimes felt uncertain about the right way to act. I want to be a good person, he told his friends, but I don't always know the best way to do it. 
Nikolai's friends understood and wanted to help him. If only I could find the answers to three questions, Nikolai continued, then I would always know what to do. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? And what is the right thing to do? Nikolai's friends considered the three questions, then Sonia, the heron, spoke. To know the best time to do things, one must plan in advance, she said. Gogol, the monkey, who had been rooting through some leaves to find something good to eat, said, You will know when to do things if you watch and pay close attention. Then Pushkin, the dog, who was just dozing off, rolled over and said, You can't pay attention to everything yourself. You need a pack to keep watch and help you decide when to do things. For example, Gogol, a coconut is about to fall on your head. Nikolai thought for a moment. Then he asked his second question. Who is the most important one? Those who are closest to heaven, said Sonia, circling up into the sky. Those who know how to help the sick, said Gogol, stroking his bruised noggin. Those who make the rules, growled Pushkin. Nikolai thought some more. Then he asked the third question. What is the right thing to do? Flying, said Sonia. Having fun all the time, laughed Gogol. Fighting, barked Pushkin right away. Then Nikolai thought for a long while. He loved his friends. He knew they were all trying their best to help him answer his questions, but their answers did not seem quite right. Then an idea came to him. I know, he thought. I will ask Leo, the turtle. He has lived a very long time. Surely he will know the answers I am looking for. So Nikolai hiked high into the mountains where the old turtle lived alone. When Nikolai arrived, he found Leo digging in the garden. The turtle was old and digging was hard for him. I have three questions and I came to ask for your help, Nikolai said. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? Leo listened carefully, but he only smiled. Then he went on with his digging. You must be tired, Nikolai said at last. Let me help you. The old turtle gave him his shovel and thanked him. And because it was easier for a young boy to dig than it was for an old turtle, Nikolai kept digging until the rows were finished. But just as he was finished, the wind blew wildly and rain burst from darkened clouds. As they moved toward the cottage for shelter, Nikolai suddenly heard a cry for help. Running down the path, he found a panda whose leg had been injured by a fallen tree. Carefully, Nikolai carried her into Leo's house and made a splint for her, made a splint for her leg with a stick of bamboo. The storm raged on, banging at the doors and windows. Leo smiled when he saw what Nikolai had done. The next morning, the sun was warm, the birds sang, and all was well with the world. The panda's leg was healing nicely, and she thanked Nikolai for saving her. At that moment, Sonia, Gogol, and Pushkin arrived to make sure everyone was all right. Nikolai felt great peace within himself. He had wonderful friends, and he had saved the panda. But he also felt disappointed. He still had not found the answers to his three questions. So he asked Leo one more time. The old turtle looked at the boy. But your questions have been answered, he said. They have asked the boy? Yesterday, if you had not stayed to help me dig my garden, you wouldn't have heard the panda's cries for help in the storm. Therefore, the most important time was the time you spent digging in the garden. The most important one at the moment was me, and the most important thing to do was help me with my garden. Later, when you found the injured panda, the most important time was the time you spent mending her leg. The most important one was the panda, and the most important thing to do was take care of her and make her safe. Remember then that there is only one important time, and that time is now. The most important one is always the one you are with, and the most important thing is to do good for the one who is standing at your side. For these, my dear boy, are the answers to what is most important in this world. For as long as I've known Dr. Ralph, he has shown each and every person he has come in contact with how important they are. There is a saying, some people come into your life for a moment, a day, a year, or a lifetime. It matters not the time they spent with you, but how they impacted your life at that time. I attended St. Catherine Academy in the Bronx, an all-girls Catholic high school, from 1998 to 1992. Dr. Ralph, or Dr. Knapp, as he was lovingly called by most of the 800 or so girls, did so much more than roam the hallways or sit behind a desk. He was an active presence in our classrooms, calling each girl by her first name and recalling facts and details about their lives and their families. When Dr. Ralph walked into a classroom, we'd be so excited by his visit. 
No matter what the subject he walked in on, Dr. Ralph would look at the aim on the board and either tell us a story pertaining to the particular topic or call on students to talk about what we were learning. He would ask us questions that he and we didn't necessarily know the answers to. Realizing that we actually had to provide the answers ourselves and not look to an outside source was difficult at first. It was a muscle we had to build. I owe a lot of who I am today and even my profession to the introspective, critical, and philosophical thinking I learned from Dr. Ralph. Very early on in my freshman year, Dr. Ralph would tell us about his beautiful family, Mrs. Napolitano, also a teacher, and his children, Mark, Scott, and Krista. Dr. Ralph viewed all of the people who enter the doors of St. Catherine Academy, his faculty and staff, the students and their parents, as his extended family. He'd bring his immediate family to school events and even show off his dancing skills with Mrs. Napolitano. He was a constant calming force in the lives of the girls who may or may not have had the most comfortable home lives. Dr. Ralph always showed the utmost respect to the young women at St. Catharines, instilling in us from the very first day the principle inscribed above the entrance to the school, America, behold thy strength and thy glory, women, pure, enlightened, tender, and wise. For a young girl like me growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, he was probably one of the first men I came in contact with who believed that women could make of themselves whatever they set their minds to be. He taught us about compassion and equality. We were all precious. And if a student still didn't realize how loved they were after four years, Dr. Ralph made it his point to dance with every senior, every senior girl graduating in 1992 to Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole's duet, Unforgettable. Throughout college and into my early adult life, I kept tabs on Dr. Ralph's whereabouts, not in a stalker kind of a way, <laughs> but because once in a lifetime you come across someone who you look to as a mentor and an inspiration. Knowing where and what Dr. Ralph was up to gave me comfort, and it made me excited for his new batch of faculty and staff, students and parents. At one time, Dr. Ralph was St. Catherine's best kept secret. But after casting his net out to Pleasantville High School and then Irvington Public Schools, more and more people were blessed with the opportunity of learning from and simply knowing Dr. Ralph. I'll never forget the day I read about Dr. Ralph's arrival at Yorktown to become our superintendent. My son Nicholas, who is currently finishing up his freshman year, was four years old and getting ready for kindergarten. Sophia was a year old and just beginning to walk. And my son Matthew, who's finishing up fourth grade, was not even born. We had just moved to Yorktown two years prior, and I was actively monitoring the school district, hoping that somehow there would be continuity. I remember crying as I read about him coming to Yorktown. He had left this indelible mark in my mind and on my soul, and now my children would have the opportunity to learn from him as well. What an amazing gift to give them. The circle was continuing. And I said a small prayer because I knew I choose, chose the perfect place to put down my roots. My heart literally felt like it does on Christmas Eve, but unlike Santa Claus, who comes but once a year bearing gifts to well-behaved children, Dr. Ralph was coming to Yorktown, and this gift was for everyone, young and old, and he has been the gift that keeps on giving. I always looked forward to his monthly letters. They became a staple in my home. I would often find myself reflect reflecting upon all of them, cutting out sentimental poems and hanging them in my kitchen cabinet to keep close. I would come to watch my children's plays and concerts, attend meetings and events, and I would immediately look for him the way starstruck fans do in Hollywood, hoping for a celebrity sighting. But he was always so much more than a celebrity. He was that constant, a man larger than life in my eyes. My children would come home and tell me that they saw Dr. Ralph at school. They'd talk about how he called them by name and how he was genuinely interested in what they were learning. Each time one of them would tell me about an encounter, it would bring me back to my days at SCA. It was quite apparent that his animated love of learning hadn't waned since I was a student and that it was still infectious. I wanted to be the type of educator Dr. Ralph is, and I always, and always hope that I can instill in my students the sense of awe he helped instill in me. Any time I had a concern, a situation, or was in need of personal assistance, he somehow found the time to help me, always answering emails with honesty. He helped guide me through my administration classes and took the time to openly and honestly respond to my questions. Dr. Ralph consistently made it seem that he had an abundance of time to deal with any issue and that whoever he was dealing with was the most important person in that room. I'm not quite sure how Tolstoy knew in 1885 when he wrote his book that some 65 or so years later a great man would come into our world who exemplified his story, but it happened. The three main questions this book asks are, 
when is the best time to do things, who is the most important one, and what is the right thing to do. The story reveals that the best time is the present time, the most important one is the person who needs you the most at any given time, and that sometimes when we don't know the answer or a solution to a problem, we need to take a look at ourselves and see that it was there all along. These questions have been continuously answered by Dr. Ralph's example, both when I was a student of his 29 years ago and for the last 11 years as he tires, tirelessly served our district. He has taught the lessons of love, compassion, and living for the moment, in the moment, in his district letters, his speeches, his conversations, and the way he carries himself. Last week at the PTSA farewell party, he mentioned that his wife was his hidden figure. On behalf of our community, I want to thank you, Mrs. Napolitano, for sharing your husband and for sacrificing the time and for sacrificing the time you could have spent with him so he can attend a literacy night, a science fair, or a community event. To Mark, Scott, and Krista, thank you for sharing your father for so many years with so many other children. Dr. Ralph, good teachers are the reason why ordinary students do extraordinary things. The legacy you leave behind is nothing short of extraordinary. I wish you much peace, health, and happiness as you enter your retirement. May God continue to bless you and your growing family as he has blessed each one of us with you. Good evening, everyone. I did tell Dr. Knapp at some point I would interrupt his process this evening. I do want to say to Dana, that was an absolutely wonderful speech. You, re you really captured the essence of who Dr. Knapp is to all of us, so that was so wonderful. I do want to point out, though, that although she couldn't wait for the monthly newsletters, when it was that time of, of the month for the newsletter, I would be in my office and I'd get an email from Dr. Knapp saying, please review and edit. And I would only be 20 minutes later when he would come in, did you read the newsletter? And I'd say, I'm only on page five. <laughs> and I don't know why he ever wanted me to review it because the message was always clear and the grammar was always correct. So um, just to share that with you. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lisa O'Shea. I'm the assistant superintendent for Yorktown Schools. As we celebrate so many anniversaries and retirements, and I look out into this audience of dedicated teachers devoted administrators, caring professionals, partnerships with the parents, our students who are so wonderful. I am rem reminded of how grateful I am every day that Dr. Knapp took a chance on me nine years ago. I am so proud to be part of YCSD and all the collaborative work that we do to support each and every student. I had an opportunity to speak about Dr. Knapp at his retirement party, and at that time I shared how much he has meant to me, both professionally and personally. I don't want to repeat my remarks from that night, except to thank Dr. Knapp for his unwavering support and guidance to me over these many years. I couldn't have asked for a better mentor or a better friend. Right now I have the pleasure of introducing one of YCSD's exceptional educators, someone who Dr. Knapp respects very much to speak on his behalf. Please join me in welcoming the dynamic Betsy Floor.
I got nothing <laughs> after all this. <laughs> This, this is an extraordinary educator. Fifth grade crampon. Oh Phenomenal. Um, good evening. I just want to say before I start uh, what I've prepared here, I better not go off script because I might cry. Uh, but I do want to congratulate all the retirees tonight and tell you that your example and your influence will go much farther than your tenure here. Uh, the children that you've touched and the colleagues that you've befriended will remember your example always. So congratulations to all of you. Um, it's very difficult to follow all that. I'm, I'm really very nervous. I didn't think I would be this nervous. I'm used to playing golf course retirement dinners and that's about it. Um, but I guess I'm nervous because you mean so much to me and uh, this is really difficult. <laughs> um, I've been asked to speak tonight about the effect that Dr. Knapp has had on me as a teacher. And one of the first things that came to mind after how can I put this into words was, wow, I wish I was Cindy Cervini because she's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not Cindy, so I had to come up with another angle, which was mentioned by everybody here in all the books that you've already mentioned. <laughs> um, this is all, be it a humbling task, because even though I like to think I can put words together fairly well, I'm uncertain that I can accurately and fit fittingly describe the positive lessons that I've learned from working with you. Our first meeting was when my friend and colleague Lynn Saro, also a retiree tonight, I'm losing both of you at the same time, uh, was approached by Dr. Knapp and he told her he was in search of a book. Lynn suggested he speak to me and she sent him down the halls of Brookside. That was 2006. Now in the past, when a superintendent appeared at the door of your classroom, a thousand reasons why you were getting that visit went through your mind. Ralph, your appearance at my door was the beginning of numerous book discussions and annual classroom visits over the next 11 years, for which I will be forever grateful for. You have never declined a request to share your time and insight with my class. This speaks volumes about your commitment and affection for the children of this district. When you entered my classroom, you became that classroom teacher that has always resided inside of your heart. For those 40 minutes that you graciously stretched into however long you needed to tell your story, you were not first and foremost the district superintendent. You were the teacher, my colleague, a mentor, but more importantly, a friend. I have wonderful memories of you speaking with an Italian accent as you read Madonna's Lazza di Cascia. Then there was the time I gave you the book Angelo, a story of an elderly Italian artisan working in a cathedral who saves a pigeon but sadly passes away. I remember, and forgive my interpretation because I'm not Italian, I'm Dutch, we're stoic. Your eyebrow went up, your forehead wrinkled, and you said to me, Betsy, barona me, Angelo dies in the end. <laughs> I assured you I did know the ending and was using it for a compare and contrast purpose with a similar bird story. <laughs> you also read The Boy Who Changed the World, which has been spoken about tonight, and explained the butterfly effect to my students. You made sure they never lost track of the plot twists by asking them if they knew how the characters were linked. You also read Passage to Freedom, the story of a Japanese ambassador to Poland who saved countless Polish Jews from the Holocaust by writing them visas. The heroism of the book's protagonist was a theme you wanted my students to understand. You read As an Oak Tree Grows about all the changes one particular tree encounters over the passage of decades. And you would always ask, boys and girls, do you like that? did you like that story? What did you think of that story? You also read the children's version of Leo Tolstoy's The Three Questions, which asked, what is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? And what is the right thing to do? launching into a discussion with 10-year-olds on the author's philosophy about life. And I guess since it was already mentioned here, that's a fitting character portrayal of you.
This year, you shared a book called Stepping Stones about a refugee family's journey during which you gave them a history lesson on the crisis in Syria, asking them three questions that allowed them to take the perspective of the family and the story. And you came back a final time to read the Matchbox Diary about an Italian grandfather who tells the story of his life to his grandchild through items he kept in matchboxes because he was illiterate and needed to document the memories of his life. You beautifully linked this to your wife's experiences in coming to America as a child. There were just a few, these were just a few of the examples that I feel illustrate how we became a district of character. With you as our leader, how could we be anything but? Just as you remember the names of all the students you have had, you are remembered for all the significant and compassionate ways you have dealt with Yorktown's children. I believe that I will remember most how you have given so unselfishly of your time and talent. When asked to tell how Nona makes her sauce at Crompon's Farm Fest, you dressed in a chef's coat and appeared with bruschetta for over 400. <laughs> Asked to impart some wisdom about the importance of reading, you enthusiastically stated that you felt honored to be asked and planned out your address by linking it to the books you've read. At Crompon's Moving Up ceremony last Friday, you retold a story entitled, Who Packs Your Parachute? It was about a Navy pilot named Charles Plum who ejected and wound up a POW during the Vietnam War. It was an inspirational story about those we come in daily contact with who are responsible for inspiring us to do great things or get through the rough periods of our lives. It was an incredibly moving story and you related how your family had been responsible for packing your parachute. You said we have an emotional parachute, a spiritual parachute, and a physical one. Ralph, your example and that the example you've set as an educator, a leader, a mentor, and a friend is one that is unparalleled in my career. So in a sense, I would have to say that you packed my professional parachute. A few years ago, you told a story about cathedral building at a board meeting. I commented that I loved the analogy, and you recommended the book, The Cathedral Within. It's a book about being a social change agent and making a difference. In the book, there's a quote from Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. A rock pile ceases to be a rock pile the moment a single man contemplates it, bearing within him the image of a cathedral. It is with sincere gratitude that I say thank you for seeing the Yorktown School District as your cathedral and putting so much heart and soul into it and us. Picasso once said that his mother told him, if you become a soldier, you will be a general. If you become a monk, you'll end up as the Pope, to which he said, I became a painter and wound up as Picasso. You became a teacher and wound up as a principal. You became a principal and wound up as our school superintendent. And as that superintendent, to quote Tina Turner, you are quite simply the best. I'm sorry, you know, when, when you're spoken about by somebody like Betsy Floor, it's something unimaginable and unforgettable, and I did forget something, and I apologize profusely for it. Earlier in the evening, we introduced Peter Scagnelli as somebody who was uh, celebrating a significant anniversary with our school district. Peter is one of our um, uh, head custodians at the Mildred E. Strang Middle School. And um, when you see our beautiful facilities, you know that the reason why they stay beautiful is because of people like Pete. So when I was distracted with the fact that he was celebrating an anniversary and there wouldn't be a student necessarily to speak about him here this evening, uh, I just lost sight of it. I, and I apologize profusely, but fortunately, Pete didn't leave. So Peter Scagnelli, like many of our custodians, many of our cleaners, uh, many of our maintenance uh, grounds people, who keep this facility beautiful for the children each and every day and make us pause in awe of when, when something is important to you, it doesn't matter what your position is. When something is important to you, it's the beauty of your work and, and the beauty of our 
custodian's work is something that is uh, unsurpassable. Uh, the, the, the buildings, the places that you sit each and every day are because of them. Uh, their, their pride in where they work and their pride in the students who come to their schools. So please forgive me and Pete, would you come up and be recognized? Minutes, don't be impatient. <laughs> oh, my flowers. And this is the end, I promise. I know that Mrs. Carbone has something to say, but um, there, there's a, a little, um, it's actually long, but this is very short. I only took an excerpt. It's called I'm a Teacher by John Schlater. And this is what he says in that excerpt. I am the most fortunate of all who labor. A doctor is allowed to usher life into the world in one magic moment. I was allowed to see that life is reborn each day with new questions, ideas, and friendships in my classroom. An architect knows that if he builds with care, his structure may stand for centuries. I knew that if I built with love and truth, what I built would last forever. And so I have a past that is rich in memories. I was a teacher, and I thank God for that privilege every day. At the end, it's not going to matter how much money I had in my bank account, or the house that I lived in, or the car that I drove, but that I touched the life and made a difference uh, for a child, that will mean everything. So congratulations to everybody here tonight that's celebrating a significant anniversary who's retiring. Uh, you have our gratitude today and uh, for many, many years to come, you'll see the beauty of what you've done in your students. Um, thank you so very much for being here tonight. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And for some reason, 11 years ago, Ralph, you took a chance on a district that was in dire need of a strong leader, of a leader who had huge shoulders and strong moral fortitude. I will be forever grateful that you took a chance on us. I wouldn't say that Yorktown was direction, a directionless district. Rather, we were heading in all sorts of different directions without a cohesive plan. You came in, you started with the basics, you devised a plan, you made sure that, as you used to tell us, everyone was in the right seat on the bus so that the plan could be implemented. You hired people who had a common vision and a passion for children. You modeled each and every day the work ethic and character that was expected from all. It wasn't quick, it wasn't easy, but 11 years later, Yorktown is a model district for education, technology, kindness, character, compassion. The list goes on and on, and let's not just forget the great facilities as you continue to improve on each and every year. There are not enough words to thank you for all you have done and given to this district. We are forever changed for the better. For me personally, you have been a teacher, a mentor, a role model, and a friend. I am a better person for having known you. I am a better board member through your thoughtful and consistent teaching and modeling. I believe many of us in the room can say the same. As you leave us physically, your lessons in kindness, compassion, and all you have done will continue to live on and grow in Yorktown. At the first meeting when we first appointed Ralph, he brought his beautiful wife, Joanne. So it's only fitting that she is here at his last meeting as we say our thanks and goodbyes. Over the years, I have learned that there is only one person that is more kind and gracious than Ralph, and that is Joanne. Joanne, thank you for the loan of your husband, for so graciously allowing him to spend the time with us. I am sorry that we are returning him a bit more battered and bruised. And I understand we won't get our deposit back. Tom, you'll have to fix that. <laughs> 
There are many people we are honoring here tonight, and I do not want to take anything away from any of them. Each of you, whether you're retiring or celebrating a significant anniversary or supporting someone who is, has played a major role in making Yorktown the wonderful district is today, and I thank you for all of that. So. I can move on. So as we say goodbye to Ralph and all the retirees, we know that the good work is, that has been done will continue. That we are committed as a district to provide the best education for every student and in order that they reach their own potential. That we will continue to value the whole child and find the ways to support each and every student and all their needs. That we will continue to model the character, compassion, and kindness that we expect of our students. And that we will never lose the focus that before us are the leaders of tomorrow who must understand and know how to lead and serve with strength and compassion. So we thank all of you for your years of, years of service to the students of Yorktown. And we have one more surprise outside, but before we do, I'd like a port of order from the board. If it's okay, I want to move something up into the agenda. Dr. Hatter, can you come join me? Yet. <laughs> I'd like all of you to meet Dr. Ron Hatter. <clears throat> As you know, when Ralph announced his retirement, the board hired a consulting firm to help us in our search for the new superintendent. As with all positions in this district, there is not a lack of very talented people who want to work in Yorktown. We went through an intensive search process, and ultimately, we, the board did chose, choose Dr. Hatter. Dr. Hatter's educational vision and passion are strongly aligned with Yorktown's, and we believe that his addition to our team will further enhance the already outstanding work that is being done in our district. He is currently the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum in Eastchester, but he lives here in our community. He's a child-centered educator who the board believes will be a great complement to our wonderful and talented administrators, faculty, and school community. So we'd like all of you to welcome Dr. Hatter to our school district. Whether it is here tonight or when you see him when he visits some of the buildings this week or whenever it is that you have the opportunity, we hope that you will take the time to meet him, introduce yourself, and share your passions. So with that, can I ask the board for a motion for the following? Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Dr. Ronald Hatter as Superintendent of Schools for the Yorktown Central School District for the period of time commencing July 10, 2017 and terminating, or not really, on June 30th, 2000, <laughs> Margo wrote it, I did, June 30th, 2021, with the annual compensation of 250000 effective July 10, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. Be it further resolved that the board, board authorizes the president to execute the agreement with Dr. Hatter, which set forth the terms and conditions of his employment as superintendent of schools during the period July 10, 2017 through June 30, 2021. A copy of the agreement shall be incorporated within reference of this meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Would you like to say a few words? Yep. Dr. Hatter is going to say a few words. I promise I'll be brief. As a parent of a child at Mohansic School, I look out at the young faces and I see, gee, we have school tomorrow and lunches to get ready and all of the other things that come with being the parent of young children. So first off, I'd like to ex recognize the retirees and those who are celebrating anniversaries this evening. You represent, hearing the st students speak of you helps me to understand that you represent all that is right in education. Hearing our students speak of you inspires me, and you all inspire me. I'd like to extend my most heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education for appointing me this evening. Your vote of confidence in entrusting me to lead the district forward is one that I deeply value, and I look forward to working tirelessly each day to ensure your confidence only strengthens. I also thank Dr. Napolitano for graciously welcoming me to the district and for giving me his very precious time to ensure a smooth transition. Dr. Napolitano is a class act in every respect, and he may not know this, but he's someone who's played an inspirational role in my development as the next superintendent. So thank you, Dr. Napolitano. I extend my thanks to the outstanding administrators, faculty, and staff who've welcomed me so warmly to the district. You are an enormously talented team of professionals, and I am honored to join you in working relentlessly to best serve the children of Yorktown. 
I'm confident that together we can take our schools to even greater heights. Finally, I would like to thank members of the community who have so kindly introduced themselves to me and offered an encouraging word of support. Your kindness and support mean so much to me and have made this transition just a little easier for my family and me. And my wife, Nicole, my high school sweetheart and best friend is joining me in the audience tonight. I've spent the last 15 years of my career in the East Chester School District with the last six years as the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Leaving East Chester was not an easy decision. The relationships I had formed, the success we had achieved, and the lives we influenced are all things that I will take with me. And while leaving East Chester was a very difficult decision, joining the Yorktown team was an easy decision. I built my career on one premise and one premise only. We do what is best for children every day, and we do it with a smile. As I will share with you at a later date, my decision rules include one question, and only one question. Is this decision in the best interest of children? That's it. That's all we do here. As I turn the to the next chapter in my career and the district in its history, I'm optimistic of what lies ahead. I look forward to building new relationships here in Yorktown and achieving even higher levels of success for our students and influencing many more lives. I look forward to meeting and getting to know each and every one of you. And until then, I wish you well. Thank you. Thanks. At this point, we're going to take a break. There are refreshments out in the, in the corridor area, so we can have about a 10 minute break or so, and there'll be a little surprise out there for Dr. Knapp as we move on out. Can I just move this to the top, guys? Point of order, guys. Because I'm sure that our PTA would love to go home at this point. Not Maria Rose. <laughs> no, they have nowhere else she to She just be. got her pajamas on. <laughs> She just wants to hang out. When I saw her back there, I said, who is she and why does she still want to be here? <laughs> she doesn't. No more money for us if we don't let her go home soon. All right. So I have a motion to accept with gratitude for the, from the Yorktown High School PTSA $3,215.23 grant for the Yorktown High School PE department for the purchase of a cross trainer for the Yorktown High School weight room and $2,748 grant for the Yorktown High School teacher Leo Spazzato for the purchase of a MacBook Pro, a GoPro Hero, and 13 copies of Motion. You doing separate? So, what kind of a motion? So, so moved. moved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, do you, do you guys want to come up and say something? No. <laughs> these were, Ralph, can you just explain why these? Yes, so what happened is, uh, you know, oftentimes the uh, PTA from the buildings will supplement FFE grants, or if an FFE grant can't be supported but the PTA really thinks it's a great grant, they'll come up with the funding. So, poor Maria Roll, we definitely, I owe you a dinner. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep my promise on this. So, two weeks ago, when the FFE came in uh, to, um, you know, go through their, thank you, when the FFE came in to go through all of their grants, they weren't aware that the uh, high school PTA was going to fund two other grants. So, Maria said, you know, we can wait. And then, I guess it was really Christine who thought, you might want to end your, have your account end at the end of June. So um, then we said, okay, we'll put it on next week's agenda. It'll be the first item. <coughs> then I saw the kids come in, and they're so musical, and they're so talented. And I just forgot you went somewhere out there. And even as all the people were kind of fading and going home, I still missed you. Uh, so f forgive me. I will buy you dinner. <laughs> Little Sorrentos. So we thank right. Steve, Leo, and Maria for staying and being patient. And we know it is a late night, so sorry, guys. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And the flowers for the board are from Lisa Tomini, oh, the PTSA sweet. president. Thank you. Oh, Maria, yes, we should. Let's give Maria all the flowers. Everybody give your flowers to Maria. Here, for waiting. <laughs> Pass them to oh, no, you get them now. <laughs> I was going to be a gift to my wife anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Não. não. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Tchau. Oh, wait, you're getting more. Wow. You get almost a dozen. That's pretty good. Look at that. You're going to be gifted too. You get parting gifts when you come here. No. Okay, Maria, dinner's off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anybody wishing to speak for public comment? No. Okay. No. Let's go back to the. I'll get confused. We're, no, we're going back to the beginning so I don't get confused. We're up to board reports. So we have an audit committee report. Tom? Yeah, just a quick update. We've got the uh, internal auditors, Tobin and Associates, in the uh, district offices this week starting the interviews for the next risk assessment process. So that's been kicked off, and I'm sure we'll see some results in uh, probably towards the end of the summer. That's it. Okay. Uh, fiscal, Mike? Uh, not really anything new. Um, Tom, we'll, we'll probably have to meet after close of the fiscal year or close to the close of the fiscal year, right? Go over uh, year end and we're going to have to discuss the um, capital reserve fund and how we want to handle that. So, what, what do you think the timing on that should be, Tom? Well, we have a very good idea where we are right now. Okay. The, 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 um, Interestingly, the, the estimates we provided in January were, were really very good. Um, so I think within the next 30 days, we'll be in a position to give you some hard and fast numbers. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, policy, Cheryl? Yeah, we uh, last met on June 13th, and uh, tonight we'll be adopting 12 policies. We'll be deleting one, and we have three to um, give to the board for first reads. Um, that was our last meeting of this school year, so I think we'll be resuming probably in September. Sounds like she want to start to backlog them for I them in September. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just want to mention that those three are yeah. kind of like dog years. It's really like 21 because yeah, they yeah, were yeah. really tough. I know, I know. So, uh, so we have so to think about whether you want to you want to do some during the summer. Or you want to wait. Right, right. Maybe we do want to continue on. That might not be a bad idea. It's a thought. So I'm fine with that. See if anybody else is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, steering, we are accepting awards for the residing and roofing on our yucky outbuildings. Um, so those will be done. Um, we are accepting a bid tonight on the underside of the middle school roof. All that will be done this summer. Plus, we already have the the lights that we're working on, which that project is already going to start taking place. So we have work. Um, <coughs> tacked on for the, the summer work. We are also, um, once, I guess, fiscal advisory figures what we're doing with capital projects, we're planning on meeting hopefully within um, the first week in Ju July to start to discuss where, where, where we should move forward because we have to understand how to use those funds, when we can use the funds, and when we can start to go to SED because everything is going to be backed up by a year going to SED. So um, we have a lot of things to try to figure out and tie in with fiscal advisory. All right, so that's that. We'll go to board action items. Can we have the acceptance of the minutes? Motion to accept the board minutes for the April 24th, May 8th, May 16th, May 22nd, and May 25th meetings. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report for May 2017? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, if I'm going too fast, Joanne, yell at me. Um, extra Classroom Activity Fund. Motion to approve the Extra Classroom Activity Fund for May 2017. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any motion to accept the Claims Audit Report for May 17? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So we have the adoption of policies. So this is the second read and the adoption for the following policies. 0115 in the regulation for student harassment and bully prevention intervention, 1100 public information program, 1120R, which is the regulation for school district regulations, records, uh, 1130 news media relations, 1210 advisory committees, 1220 relations with community and business organizations, 1221 relations with parent organizations, I told you we were busy, 1235 civility and decorum, 1240 visitors to school, 1240 are visitors to school regulation and 3240 organization of responsibility. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We would like to delete uh, policy 1500E. It's the exhibit for the public use of facilities. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then we have first reads of 4525, the responsible use of technology, 1500, the public use of facilities, and 1500 are public use of facilities regulation. Anybody have any questions or comments on them? I would just like to thank Tom Cole and Trish Harris and everybody who worked on the facilities policy because it was a bear. It was torture, yes. But Is thank you all. The public use one? The the public, yeah. it, parts of it hadn't been updated since 1995. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. work. Yeah. It was. So we thank everybody who uh, worked on it. But that was a good year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, personnel. Can I have upon recommendation? of the superintendent a motion that the following resolution be approved be it resolved that the board of ed hereby authorizes the superintendent to execute a memorandum of agreement between the yorktown central school district and the yorktown professional registered nurses unit westchester county local 860 to provide increase to to provide increase the oh, that doesn't make sense to increase the hiring salary range to 65,000 to 72,000 a copy of said agreement shall be incorporated within the reference of this meeting so moved second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then the rest of our personnel agenda. Upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion the following be approved. We have uh, certified personnel part-time appointments and temporary appointments. We have seasonal substitute appointments, extended year program, the extended year reading program, uh, two leaves of absence, and then we have, unfortunately, Donna Barada's resignation uh, for purpose of retirement. Um, under classified, we have seasonal and substitute appointments and a resignation of Martina Sheridan, a teacher's aide for personal reasons, and that's it. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Business office. A motion to establish the rate of pay of $20 per hour for school monitors hired for safety security of the programs being held on the Yorktown High School campus during the 2017 summer. So moved. Second. Discussion? Sure. So these are teachers that are acting as monitors or are these part of the security force that we hire? That, they're both. We have the security through the manpower incorporated for the town camps and we have our, uh, uh, one individual who will serve on the, in this role for the summer programs for our students taking place at the high school. Okay. Thanks. Sometimes in the, in the mornings with the summer programs there's more <laughs> people on campus than there are in the school year. <laughs> Um, health and welfare, a motion to approve the contract for health and welfare services provided to resident pupils attending non-public schools in other districts for the 16-17 school year. This is to Tarrytown. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Southern Westchester BOCES, whereas it is the desire of the participating school districts of the Southern Westchester BOCES Cooperative Educational Services adopting this res resolution to bidly, bid jointly in those supplies, commodities, materials, and equipment set forth below. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Yorktown Central School District agrees to participate with other districts of the Southern Westchester Board of Educational Services, Westchester County, New York, adopting this joint bidding of the following. Yeah, I'm not reading it all. Can I read the end? No. Done. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve the following tax search resolution by order of the Supreme Court of the State of New York held in and for the County of Westchester on the first day of June 2017 a school tax refund in the amount of $9,417.94 is due to 271 Veterans Road Realty LLC for the tax years 2011 to 2016. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion Tom what are we up to this year? For this, tax certs? This year we're just about 100,000. So the big one we're expecting is still out there if it hasn't come through yet. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Student assistance resolved upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools. The Board of Education authorizes Superintendent of Schools to execute an agreement with Student Assistance Services Corporation for comprehensive educational prevention and intervention services in the amount of and not to exceed $71,270 for the 17-18 school year for the Yorktown High School pending receipt of insurance documents. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion, is there one coming for the middle school as well? We did uh, ask the company to find a full-time person for the middle school for next year, so they're looking for someone to take on that responsibility for us. Previously, we had a part-time position. Our needs have grown, and in addition, um, we weren't able to keep people on a part-time basis. Okay, so we will have a second one coming when we get Yes. Okay, great, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A bid award? 
Whereas bids were open on May 11, 2017 for the district's operations and sewerage building, re-roofing, and siding work on the Yorktown High School Middle School Campus Bureau resolved upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby awards the following contract to the lowest responsible bidder as recommended by Aris Contracting and KSQ Architects. Radiclev, Dennis, what is the name? Renacleave Brothers, Inc. of Shenorock, New York, in the total of $220,480. Further be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby authorizes and empowers the President of the Board to execute the agreement with Renacleave Brothers for the same contingent upon review of said documents by District Attorney. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Demographic study resolved upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools. The Board of Education hereby approves the proposal in the amount of $21,750 for the professional services to provide the district with enrollment projection and a school wide <coughs> demographic study. The Board hereby authorizes and empowers the Board President to execute the agreement with SES study team for the same upon approval by district <coughs> council. So, so moved. Moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Special Ed, a motion to arrange the following special education placements as of June 19, 2017. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A clinical affiliation. A motion to approve the agreement with Mercy College School of Health and Natural Sciences to provide occupational therapy student clinicians from their clinical education program and the Yorktown High School District to provide quality student training to occupational therapy student clinicians who are enrolled and have good standing in the clinical education program of Mercy. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion, Lisa, can you explain what this is about? So we currently have an agreement with Mercy School of Education for student teachers in the classroom. This is with the School of Health and Natural Science to provide uh, training for our existing occupational therapists to, to take on a student teacher in the occupational therapy realm. Terrific, okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to approve the following contract for the 17-18 school year. Jackie Arno, physical therapy services district-wide as mandated by the student IEPs at a rate of $65 per session when school district is in session, not to exceed $96,000 for the 17-18 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're gonna finish up gifts, grants, and donations. Scholarship grants, a $500 in contribution to the Christopher Gianni Tini Memorial Fund for Mr. Peter Giantini, $300 in contribution to the George Budgeries Memorial Scholarship Fund from Theater and Rhoda George Alice, $250 in scholarship for the Peter Cariolo Award from Eric Salcalo Cariello at the Yorktown High School Lead Department, $550 from Christine Saro for the Joseph D'Escoli Class of 1997 Memorial Fund at Brookside, $125.45 for the United Way uh, easy match program for materials and supplies at Brookside and at the Yorktown High School, go, again, York, $8 from the New York Life, your cause payroll match to Yorktown High School. It's 48 cents, not 45 cents. Where's 48? Oh, Brookside, I, I cheat him out of three cents, yep. sorry. <laughs> 48 cents to Brookside, sorry. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much for your donations. We're up to board comment. Anthony, you want to start? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to congratulate all the retirees, I guess. And I just was sitting here thinking about the things I'm going to miss about Dr. Knapp. Um, I, I got, got to tell you, we'll definitely miss your generosity and your just genius for the district, your insight, your foresight, your hindsight, your all the sights, your love for everybody in the district. I will personally miss the heck out of you. Thank so you. So I'm going to start crying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike? I can't follow that. Okay. <laughs> don't talk about St. Catharines. Just don't talk I'm going to skip St. Catharines. Um, just fantastic night all the way around. Um, Ralph, I, I know it wasn't all about you. you you've always brought it back to, to everybody else and the faculty that uh, we were honoring tonight. Uh, the best part for me is, is when you have the kids come up and talk. It's just tremendous, and um, thank you for that. Um, obviously, you'll be deeply missed here, but uh, I know we'll be in touch, and uh, we'll thank see you at graduation anyway, so I'm sure. not saying goodbye yet. So. Anyway, great meeting, a lot going on. Uh, Ron's here, welcome. Uh, everybody's doing fantastic work here. Thank, thank you. you.
Uh, it was a great night uh, indeed. Uh, congratulations to our retirees and also our significant um, anniversary, uh, the ones celebrating the significant anniversaries. Ralph, you will be very much uh, missed. It's hard to believe this is our last formal you know, board meeting of the year. Um, it's been absolutely great to know you and work with you. And I wish you and Mrs. Napolitano the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. Tom? Yeah, tonight was a great night. I thought um, <clears throat> it was a real reflection of Ralph over the last 11 years to see all the, the love in the room. So uh, congratulations, Ralph. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for everything you've done, for the district, and for me. I, I said it once before. I'll say it again. Uh, over the last seven and a half years, you've made me want to be a better board member and a better person. So thank, thank you. you for that. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Um, yeah, much of the same. Um, as we went through the anniversaries and the retirements, I was moved to tears many times. When I think of all the these outstanding uh, educators we had in the room tonight, and, and many of whom will be leaving us. They will leave such an impression on us and our children. Um, but Ralph, as I think of you, I remember the first time I was introduced to you, not individually, but it was at my daughter's moving up ceremony out of Mohansic. And I remember I kind of cheated only because I had friends and family in districts where you had already been. So I knew what we were getting and I knew we were going to be on a great path. Um, you certainly exceeded my expectations and I thank you so much for not only what you've done for our school community, our community as a whole, and also for my own children. They were very, very lucky to have been led by you and the school community for which you, um, you know, were at, at the head of. So I appreciate it um, really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. I don't have any more words. You can say whatever you want, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> this night really represents what Yorktown is, and that's because of the culture that Ralph has put into this place over the last 11 years. To look out and see the students, the parents, the staff, everyone here to recognize and honor each other and the good work that everyone does, it's so touching and it's really so heartfelt, especially this time of year when there's that sense of um, exhaustion at, at some times with everything that's going on to be able to see it all come together like this is really wonderful and there's certainly so many people that were recognized tonight who have meant so much to me and um, so it's heartfelt but in terms of, of, of you Ralph I've been able to be with you at the many events over the last few months that have honored you um, and and get, showed you how much the community the staff the students the parents all value you you know that's not something you see every day and to have been able to go side by side with you through that whole process I'm lucky to know you and I certainly even though there was a lot of recognition I still don't feel like it's enough <laughs> so um, kudos to you for all you've done and, and all you've done for me thank you thank you Tom go ahead yes it, it was a, a wonderful night to see everybody here and and celebrate their careers and um, so many family members and friends who were here, and the weather didn't deter mm -hmm. anybody, uh, which is a, a testament to everybody who was here. Um, with regard to, to you, Ralph, it's been a unique pleasure and an honor uh, to work and serve with you for so many years. And what, um, if people who are watching this can take one thing away from what, um, what Ralph represents, what you saw here tonight is what we see every day and have seen every day for 11 years. and. Um, the behaviors and the characteristics and the ethical standards that you've modeled every day for the last 11 years are what forms all of the uh, uh, people in our in, uh, in our school district and, and informs them how we should act. Um, I've been here for 17 years, seen the district in a number of different states, and I think um, anybody who leads an organization should be proud to say that they left it in far better shape than they found it. And I think <coughs> you're certainly able to say that. Thank you. So we thank you for that. It's thank more you. than far better. Thank Tonight, you. when you look at the, and I, I say it after many of these meetings, but Tom can attest to it. 12 years ago, a retirement ceremony could have been held in a closet. Nobody came, nobody cared. Now we had to move the venue to the auditorium and we almost filled it because everybody cares because Ralph cares. And, and that's really the bottom line. We are all just modeling the behavior that he has exhibited for the last 11 years. And it's been 
the most wonderful pleasure of my life to have worked with you, to have learned from you, to call you a friend. Uh, there's nothing greater that I could ever say to you. Um, I, I love you. I will miss you. There are no words to thank you for everything you have done for this district. I don't think you really realize the mark you have left on us, and I thank you for it. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Well, we can have public Second. comment if anyone wants Second. to speak. Oh, wait. No, okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye